Good morning. My name is Sam. I am an alcoholic and I'm also a son of recovery. Let's start out with the serenity prayer. Good and gracious God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. I'm reading through Recovery Dharma, how to use Buddhist practices and principles to heal the suffering of addiction. We're in the community Sangha section and we're on service and generosity. Different schools of Buddhism have slightly different lists of strengths or good qualities that lead a person to enlightenment. First on every one of those lists, though, is dana, or generosity. We often think of generosity in terms of money, and many groups use the word dana to describe the donations that members give to help support the, the meeting. In the Buddhist tradition, though, dana is any act of giving, not just money, but also food, time, or our attention without expecting anything in return. You may already be familiar with the emphasis that many recovery programs put on service, which is perfectly in line with this ancient teaching. The merit of this practice has been central in many religions and philosophies down through the centuries. This sounds a lot like step 12 to me. Uh, uh, service. So, generosity with our time, energy, and attention is not only a benefit to others on this path. As we become more generous, it also helps us loosen the grip of greed and attachment that caused so much of our own suffering. From the first time we mindfully put a couple of dollars in the offering bowl or introduce ourselves to a newcomer after a meeting, we can start to feel the benefit of being generous without asking for thanks. In our meditation practice, we learn through direct experience how our bodies and our wealth are impermanent. And this insight makes us more willing to do good with them while we still have them. Sharing our experience at a meeting or even simply meditating along with others and giving our silent encouragement and support is an act of kindness that benefits both ourselves and our Sangha. Many of us have trained ourselves for years to be vigilant about being taken advantage of or ripped off. In some cases, this has certainly been justified, and there will always be times where we will need to set and maintain healthy boundaries. But as our practice deepens, we're able to do so with an attitude of discernment and compassion. In the Buddhist teachings, generosity is not a commandment or a you should, or an unrealistic standard that people are expected to measure themselves by and find themselves falling short. It is instead a description of our true nature, of the open and loving hearts that have always been within us, but that have been covered up for so long that they were almost lost to us. The practice helps us to recover this original nature. As we try to be more and more generous in our meetings and in our lives, we learn to trust our own innate kindness and we build up confidence that we can give of ourselves to others and still be safe. We continually test what we think are our limitations and grow in self-esteem, self-respect, and well-being as we see these limitations for what they are, defensive strategies that may once have been necessary, but with much, but which have hardened into the handcuffs of habit. The voice of our attachments may say, I don't want to put my hand, my hard-earned money in that bowl, or Maybe I'll do this act of service, but I'll stop if people don't show enough appreciation. As we practice generosity, we see how these fears are transparent, how they have kept us small. We begin to realize that this practice is really about creating more space in our hearts and minds. As we notice our limits and allow ourselves to go beyond them, our heart, our heart minds become more expansive, more spacious and composed. This brings us greater feelings of happiness and self-respect and gives us practice and gives us and gives our practice more strength and flexibility to look at the conditions of our lives and our recovery. We can see the benefits of such a practice when we think about the opposite of this openness about times about times when our minds and hearts have been closed and protective. We felt on edge, uneasy, and we usually didn't like ourselves very much. In that kind of a state, we had very few resources to, to deal with any discomfort or confusion. We were often thrown off balance by even small setbacks. Painful or difficult experiences often overwhelmed us and sent us running for the temporary relief of substances or behaviors. 
As we get more comfortable with a generous open heart, we experience more balance and ease. When something unpleasant arises, we don't have to worry that it's going to crush us or overpower us. We have a refuge we can increasingly rely on in times of trouble, and when a pleasant experience arises, we don't cling to it as desperately because we don't actually need it to feel good about ourselves. We also practice generosity to be of service to others, to extend healing and happiness to all all beings, and to try in some small way to reduce the suffering in, in this world. What we learn as we continue to work with generosity is that the inner practice of recognizing the emptiness of our attachments and building up up resilience is one and the same as the as the outer practice of giving and service. You know, this uh, weighs heavily on step 12 and how, you know, we go out to serve other alcoholics um, as much as we can and um, you know, and how important that is for our recovery, uh, telling our stories to other alcoholics and helping them, uh, with, uh, their, their recovery and coming to understand the healing that they need. Um, and, you know, I always love how people talk about that's not just sponsoring. Um, it's also just helping out at meetings, just making sure the coffee's done or making sure everything's cleaned up at the end or, or leading a meeting, or just doing a reading for the leader. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's just uh, using your voice and stepping up and using your hands and doing what you can do uh, just to help out and make sure that everything's going smoothly. Um, and that's what, you know, that's just being generous. Uh, I love this. This is such a wonderful, wonderful section. So the next section is going to be called Recovery is Possible. So we will get to that in the next moment. But you know what? I'm going to look for us. A step 12 or how about this? Wisdom. Father of light, you have promised to give wisdom generously to all who ask in faith. Please give me wisdom. Make me wise to know your way for me, wise to make good decisions, wise to be useful to others, and wise to understand your word. May your spirit give me wisdom, that I may know your will, that I may honor you and find pleasure in obeying you. So, as always, if you have any comments, thoughts, or questions, please leave them, and I hope you have a blessed day. Thanks.